Okay, let's have a conversation about the no true Scotsman fallacy fallacy. The fallacy fallacy? Yeah, the no true Scotsman fallacy. That is a fallacy. What's a fallacy? The fact that it's a fallacy. That's fallacious. Okay, never mind. If and you take a map of the world, and you go look at that map, you will notice that there is a place in the world known as Scotland. And in this place known as Scotland, there would be inhabitants who we would refer to as Scotsmen. You're with me so far? These Scotsmen would have defining traits and characteristics that distinguish them from inhabitants of other lands. For example, the same map of the world, you will notice that there's a place known as France. For the purposes of this discussion, let's define those inhabitants as French men. They would have different traits, different defining traits and characteristics. Hence, <laughs> there is such a thing as a true Scotsman versus a not true Scotsman. There are defining traits and characteristics of the Scotsman. This guy over here wears the dress. Ah, he's probably a true Scotsman. This guy over here plays the bagpipes. Probably a true Scotsman. This guy's favorite movie is, Will is Braveheart. Matter of fact, all their favorite movies are Braveheart. Well, gee, what a coincidence. You ask William Wallace, hey, William Wallace, is there a true Scotsman? Yeah, there is. That guy can't play the bagpipes worth a damn. He's terrible. He ain't no true Scotsman. There are defining traits and characteristics of Scotsmen. Do you ever think about the talking point when you use it or are you just trying to win an argument? There is such a thing as a true Scotsman versus a not true Scotsman. People who have different traits and characteristics would not be true Scotsmen. This guy plays the bagpipes. This guy wears a dress. But he eats crepes for breakfast. Well, he's kind of a Scotsman. He's also kind of a Frenchman. Now, let's broaden the conversation to include Christianity and why it comes up. I am allowed to define for you and for myself, if we are having a conversation about Christianity and we are talking about my personal faith, guess what? I am allowed to define for you and for myself the parameters of my faith as I understand it. Hence, I tell you, they are of my house and they are not of my house. Those are real Christians and those ain't. And if we can't have a conversation like that, walk away from the table because we got nothing to discuss. We got nothing to discuss. If you're asking me about my personal faith, guess what? I can tell you with 100% conviction. No, those people are not really Christians. Westboro Baptist, for example. How do you know they're not Christians? They say they follow the Bible. Well, they don't. One of the first public utterances of Jesus Christ. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Those guys aren't merciful worth a damn. Matter of fact, they protest soldiers. They protest soldiers who have fallen in battle because I think they're upset that the, the, they say that the soldier's going to burn in hell because the army has let gays into the military. That's insanity. Yeah, that's obviously insanity, but it's also not merciful. The Bible even tells you itself, warns you against certain types of people saying they're Christians, say they will come to you in my name. They are false prophets. Inwardly, they are ravening wolves. How shall you know them? You shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is one of the first distinguishing characteristics of a true Christian versus a not true Christian. There is such a thing as a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Somebody who is walking the walk and talking the talk and means what they say. And there is such a thing as a false disciple of Jesus Christ. The Bible itself warns you against them. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. What are evil workers? Westboro Baptist type Christians who say they're Christians that give Christianity a bad name. The Bible also says that. Because of you, my name is blasphemed amongst the, amongst the non-believers. That's the Bible. Because of people like the Westboro Baptist, the name of Christianity is blasphemed amongst the people of the world, amongst some of the people listening to this right now. But just to clarify the point I'm making, 
There is such a thing as a true practitioner of Christianity. And there is such a thing as a false practitioner of Christianity. Hence, there is a true Scotsman forever and always. And the Bible even tells you how to distinguish those people, the false, the false practitioners of Christianity, from the true. How you distinguish the false practitioners of Christianity from the true, you shall know them by their fruits. And here we have Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So you can call them out if you want to. First fruit of the Spirit is love. Second, joy, peace. They aren't loving, joyous, and peaceful. You know? There's a pretty good indication that they aren't of my house. That they aren't, they are calling themselves Christians, but they aren't really Christians. So, if you want to be a true Scotsman, what do you do? You learn to play the bagpipes, you put on the dress, and you watch yourself some brave heart. You want to be a true Christian, first and foremost... You try and walk as Jesus walked in the world. You try and be a disciple of Jesus Christ, which means first and foremost, you try and walk in love to the best of your ability. Have peace in your heart to the best of your ability. I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me because they trusted in me. Try and exemplify these qualities, the, the gifts of the Spirit. Meekness, temperance, long-suffering, gentleness. Against such there is no law. So, there is such a thing as a true Scotsman. And there is also such a thing as a true Christian. Peace out.